Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 114. Day 3114. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 114. We are covering the topic of probability. And today is our 14th lesson in the series of 15. The penultimate lesson, the penultimate video on the topic of probability. A word that we used yesterday, penultimate, which simply means second to the last. It's just a very fancy way of saying second to the last. It's the word that we learned, that, uh, it's the word that we already learned in our vocabulary lessons. Just type in GRE vocabulary words, GRE vocabulary words, day 11, the search for it. Just type in, in the search box, GRE vocabulary words, day 11 or day 1, and you will find the vocabulary words that you need for the, to do well on the GRE verbal portion of the exam. Do you understand? The videos are on my channel, and do what you can. Whatever you do, my, my philosophy is that whatever you do is better than not doing anything at all, not having done anything at all. You must work on the vocabulary. It is a very important, very large part of the verbal exam. Many people get poor score on the verbal portion of the exam because of the poor vocabulary. I know that you're working on the math portion, obviously, because you're watching this video, but you mustn't forget the other half of the exam. Do you understand? Anyway, here's the problem. Problem number 14 is what we are about to do. It is on page number 321. I hope that the book is in front of you. Turn to, the, turn to page 321 and read the problem with me. Here's what it says. It says that we have four events. Four events, A, B, C, and D, such that A, event A and B, we are told, are mutually exclusive. Event A and B are mutually exclusive. What does it mean to be mutually exclusive? We have talked about it many, many times before. It simply means that if A happens, if A happens, B cannot happen. They cannot both happen at the same time. They cannot both happen at the same time. For example, let's quick call. I know we have talked about it many times, but just one more, one more time, a quick review. For example, if I tell you that there are five students, there are five students who are taking English course, and there are four students who are taking French course, course in French, and there is no students among these nine, there is no students among these nine who's taking both of the languages. Nobody is studying both the languages. Five students are taking English, four are taking French. How do we show this in terms of Venn diagram? Well, in terms of Venn diagram, there is set E, which will have five elements, and there is set F, which will have four elements. And they do not touch each other. These are disjointed sets. These are disjointed sets because they have nothing in common. There is nobody here among these nine people who is taking both languages. In other words, in other words, if one event happens, the other cannot. So here is how it goes. Among these nine people, among these nine people, if we were to pick one person at random, if I pick one person at random and I tell you that the person who I picked at random tells me that he or she is taking English, I'm telling you that that person is taking English and then I turn around and ask you, what are the odds that this person is also taking French? After having told, after you've been told that the person that I just picked is taking English, what are the odds that this person is also taking French? The answer to that question of course is a big fat zero. Big fat zero because there is nobody is taking both languages. There is nobody here who's, who's taking both languages. In other words, if you tell me that the event E just took place, if you just tell me that the event E just took place, if you tell me that the person that you picked is taking English, if you just tell me that the event E just took place, it rules out the possibility of F. If, if event E took place, F cannot take place. And similarly, if you were to tell me that among these nine people you pick one person at random and that person tells you that he is taking French, and then you ask me, what are the odds that that person, that same person, is also taking English? The answer is zero. They cannot both happen at the same time. These two events are mutually exclusive. Mutual exclusive exclusivity means that if one happens, other cannot. That's the very basic fundamental concept of probability. Mutual exclusive, ex exclusive, exclusivity and independence. Those are the two fundamental, most fundamental concepts of probability. We just discussed mutual exclusivity. I'm not going to repeat everything. Independence. What does it mean? What does it mean for two events to be independent? That's very. That's that's the concept is actually very simple. A simpler concept than the mutual exclusivity. Two events are independent if the odds of one event happening or not happening has absolutely nothing to do with the other event. The odds of second events 
does not influence the odds of the first event and vice versa. It doesn't matter if there is a 70% chance that event A will take place and 37% chance that event B will take place, then the odds of event B and event A have absolutely not, they do not influence each other. The classic example that is given in the textbook is tossing a coin. If I toss a coin, what are the odds that I'm going to get ahead? 50%. What are the odds that I'm going to get ahead again in the second try? 50%. What are the odds that I'm going to get ahead on the on the 3,000th try? Again, 50%. Because the coin has no memory. So the odds of each event is 50%. It's not influenced by what happened before. It doesn't. The other, the probability of other events does not influence the odds of this event. All of these events are mutually exclu um, are, are independent. Tossing a coin, no matter how many times you toss a coin, all of those events are independent of each other. Their probability is fixed. It's 50%. It doesn't matter what you got in the what you got in the previous toss. It has no impact. It's not influenced by what you're going to get in the future tosses. It's fixed. Do you understand? Anyway, enough of the talk. Let's do the problem. The first question that they ask us is, what's the probability of event B? What is the probability of event B? To answer this question, we need the room, so I'm going to raise all of this thing. To answer this question and the next question, both of these questions deal with what we learned on day number, what we learned on day number 3091, on day 91, today is our day 114, on day 91 on page 300, we learned something called inclusive exclusive principle it's not hyphenated inclusive exclusive principle which goes something like this it says the odds of event A or B happening odds of event either A or B happening is equal to the odds of A happening plus the odds of B happening minus the odds of A and B happening and this is simply this is simply the depiction of depiction of Venn diagram. This is simply the depiction of Venn diagram because this this thing reminds us to avoid to undo to undo or to avoid double counting. You see, when we talk about probability of A happening, we're talking about this set, set A. When we talk about the probability of set probability of event B happening, this is set B. This is set B. And A and B is this part right here. And this are, these are the elements that are going to be double counted. And because they are double counted, we have to subtract one time. So if they were, let's, look, let's look at another example, English and French. English and French. Let's say 10 people are taking English. Uh, eight people are taking French, and let's say three people are taking both. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. So, ten people are taking English, right here. Eight people are taking French, and then they go on to tell us that three are taking both. So, three are taking both. They possess quality, both of the quality. They are speaking. They are, they are taking English and French. They, it goes here three, but those three people are already counted in the ten. So, we have to take away three from here becomes a seven, and three from here becomes a five. But in terms of what this says here, what this says here is this. So, what are the odds? What are the odds that somebody who's taking, if I were to pick, if I were to pick one person at random, what are the odds that the person is taking either English or French? Okay, I need the room, so we need to raise it. Watch, watch, listen to what happens. What are the odds that if you were to pick one person? who is taking either English or French, event A is taking English, event B is taking French. Well, odds of somebody who is taking English, we were told is there are 10 people. Odds of somebody who is taking French, there are 8 such people. But we do not have 18 people, as you can see clearly, we do not have total of 18 people. Because 3 of them are taking both, 3 of them are taking both, which means this is only 7 people who are taking only English. There are only 5 people who are taking only French. So total number of people that we have is 7 plus 5 plus 3. We have 15 people. We do not have 18 people. We do not have 18 people. We have only 15 people. As you can see, 3 people are double counted. And because they are double counted, we have to subtract the people who are taking both English and French. English and French, there were 3 such people. Out of a total of 15 people. And what is supposed, 
what do you suppose we will get when we finish with all things? Let's keep, keep listening. What happens at the end when we finish with all things? 10 plus 8 minus 3 is 15. 15 over 15 which is 1. What does it tell me? It tells us that there are, one more time, okay? Now listen carefully. One more time. We have 10 people who are taking English, 8 people who are taking French, and 3 people are taking both. That's what we are told. Nothing else. We were not told anything. 10 people are taking English, 8 people are taking French, 3 of them are taking both. What are the odds that if I were to pick one person among these people, however many people, that doesn't matter right now, what are the odds that if I were to pick one people among all of these people, what are the odds that the person is taking either English or French? Well, it's 100%. Even if we, even if we did not know how many people are taking both, well, if you would pick one people at random among the people who are taking English or French or both, the odds of picking somebody who is taking English or French or both is guaranteed is 100% because there is a total pool. That's what this is. And that's what we're going to use here. Except here, except here, what happens? Except in this case, in part A, this guy is a big fat zero. Why is a big fat zero? Why is this quantity zero? Because we are told that A and B are mutually exclusive. That's, that's why it's important. A and B are mutually exclusive. They cannot happen at the same time. In other words, they are disjointed sets. There is no element in either uh, there is no element in either set A or set B that possesses. There are no elements that belong to either set A or B that possess both quality. There is no. They are not overlapping. They are disjointed. So this is a big fat zero. The probability of A or B, what we are given right here is 60%. Probability of A, what we are given here, 20%. And probability of B is what we are looking for, let's call it X. And the odds, the odds that either A, the odds that A and B will happen is zero, is zero because they are mutually exclusive. It is impossible for both A and B to happen at the same time because if A happens, B cannot happen, and if B happens, A cannot happen. They cannot both happen at the same time. That's what this means. That's it, we are done. So X is simply 60% minus 20% is 40%. So X is 40%, and X is what we are describing at probability of B. So that's part A. The odds of event B happening is only 40%. Let's look at second part, part B. In part B, they are looking for what are the odds of event D. Okay, watch what happens. So instead of A or B, now we are going to have C or D. But here, we are not told that C and D are mutually exclusive. It is not told us. Either in the probability question, okay, this is again very important to understand. In the, in the, in the, in the question, in the context of probability problems, they will, the problem will either tell you explicitly that the two events are mutually exclusive or the nature of the problem is such that it does not become very, they will either tell you exclusively that they are mutually exclusive or if it's a word problem with the nature of the problem is such that they don't actually tell you that they're mutually exclusive then the nature of the problem will make it quite clear whether or not the two events are mutually exclusive. Do you understand? That's it. So for example, For example, what are the odds of picking a, 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 an even number and what are the odds of picking an odd number? Well, these two events, picking an even number from a set of numbers or picking an odd number from a set of numbers, these two events are mutually exclusive because it is impossible for two events to happen at the same time. If you pick a number and if that number happens to be an even number, then asking ourselves what are the odds that the person, that the number that I have picked is odd number given the fact that I just told you that it's even. Well, the number cannot be both at the same time, even and odd. They are mutually exclusive. Do you understand? If there are 15 boys and 10 girls, and if you were to pick one person at random, what are the odds that the person that I picked is a boy? What are the odds that the person that I picked is a girl? Well, we can figure out those odds. What are the odds that the person that I picked is both boy and a girl? Well, these are two mutually exclusive events. Because the person that you picked is going to be either boy or a girl, not both, obviously. You understand these are mutually exclusive events. Once you tell me that the person that you picked is a boy, 
And then you ask me what are the what are the odds that that person that I just picked, I'm telling you is a boy, what are the odds that the person that I picked is actually a, also a girl, that odd is zero. Because if event A happens, event B cannot happen. They cannot both happen at the same time. That is not what we're told here. We are not told that A and B are mutually exclusive. What we are told here is that independent. So let's see what happens. Yeah, we are not told. So let's first of all put in put in the symbols here for C and D. So the same concept we're going to use, we're going to use the same tool of inclusive exclusive principle to do part B also. C or D is equal to probability of C plus the probability of D minus the probability of C and D. And now let's see what, 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 what happens next. Obviously this guy is not zero because we're not told that they are mutually exclusive as I keep repeating myself. That's one Q. We are to that we, are, that we are not told that they are mutually exclusive. Another Q is that they are giving you, or they do not give you this thing, C and D. I oh, will get to that in a second then. Probability of C or D is 60%. Probability of C is 50%. Let's do it, let's do it in terms of, let's do it in terms of, fractions it might be easier here probability of c is 50 percent one half probability of d is what the question was asking i believe yes that is what the unknown is minus the probability of c and d how do we find that probability of what are the odds that both event what are the odds that c and d both happen well that that odds are not zero it's not zero because they are not mutually exclusive and they are not mutually exclusive because we are not told that but we are told that they are independent events. This is why this, import, this piece of information is important. We are told that these two events are independent. If the two events are independent, then the odds of both of them, if two events are independent, if the two events are independent, then the odds of both of them happening, C and D, C and D, is simply the product of the two odds. If they are independent. If C and D are if C and D are independent, which they are. They are because they tell us that. So what's the odds of C? Odds of C is 50%. Odds of D, again, we, that's, that is what we need to find out. That's the odds of D, we do not know. So this is our equation. So what's what happens? We need the room, so I need to raise this thing again quickly. We're almost done. So this is 3 half minus half, let's put it in tenth, 6 tenth minus half, which is going to be 5 tenth. I'm going to bring it here and convert the denominators to, to, to 10. And now x minus half is, is just half an x. 6 minus 5 is 1, so 1 tenth, 1 tenth equals half an x, and therefore x equals 2 tenth, which is 1 fifth, or 20%. I hope you can read that law. That's it. In, in the event that you cannot read that law, I'm going to continue this here. This implies, this equation right here, this equation right here implies, if one tenth is equal to half an x, that means x must be equal to two tenth. Because you multiply both sides by two, and that is equal to one fifth, and that's 20%, that's the answer, so part b. I know it took a very long time to solve one very simple problem, but I wanted to, for the very last time, repeat these concepts because tomorrow we'll do the very last, very last problem, problem number 15, and I won't repeat everything again, but I just want to make sure that you, that you drill in your head these two fundamental concepts, mutual exclusive, exclusivity and independence. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow where we'll do the very last problem, problem number 15. It's going to be the 15th lesson in the series of 15 on day number 115, problem number 15, okay. which happens to be on the next, which happens to be on the next page, page number 322, problem number 15, 15th video in the series of 15, the very last one. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.